espresso coffee means strong coffee. And perhaps that's the reason why Maruti Suzuki Limited, the market leaders in cars, has made a strong looking car like this, the Espresso. Well, it's quite an interesting looking car and we're going to drive it and find out what it has to offer. Maruti Suzuki, which launched the Espresso recently, the country is offering the car with a petrol 998cc K10B engine. There is an option of either a 5-speed manual transmission or an AMT or automated manual transmission. Maruti calls it AMT as Auto Gear Shift or AGS. We got the top end VXI Plus mated to an AGS. For record's sake, Maruti is offering a standard version, an LXI, a VXI MT and AGS and a VXI Plus MT and AGS. The VXI and VXI Plus variants get bigger tires at 165 by 70 R14, while those below get 145 by 80 R13 tires. The dimensions for all the variants are similar except for the height of the VXI and the VXI Plus, which is 1564 mm, the other two being 1549 mm. The length of the model is 3565 mm. The width is 1520 mm and the wheelbase is 2380 mm. The vehicle definitely has a high stance and looks a lot tough and aggressive from the front. The bold fascia and the twin chamber headlights make up for the front with a muscular looking bonnet. Then there are the part body colored bumpers. The side profile is accentuated by the side body cladding and the decent ground clearance. Being the top end variant, it gets body colored ORVMs which are adjustable from inside. Mind you, this adjustable feature is only for the VXI Plus variant. Then there are body colored outside door handles and B-pillar blackout tape. The vehicle sits on non-alloy tires with full wheel covers. There is a roof antenna too. As you move to the rear, the car looks a bit narrow and not as smart as the front. But then there are the signature C-shaped tail lamps. Overall, the vehicle gives an impressive look. Maruti Suzuki calls it a mini SUV. Here I may not at all agree with them. That's being a bit too ambitious. It's a solid looking small car. When you step inside, you realize it is no pushover in terms of features. The interiors look very decent and what really stares at you when you're inside is the huge circular center console on the smart looking dashboard, a la BMW mini kind. But this is huge by any proportion and this houses the infotainment system and the instrument cluster. But hey, why is the speedometer and other such gauges not in front of the driver? Well, Maruti Suzuki thinks this is cool and I did find this very cool. When you're driving your car, you are at the most bothered about your speed. And since the screen displays the speed in a very large font, I was not complaining even without my spectacles. The instrument cluster has a digital display where apart from speed, you get to see fuel consumption figures, both instantaneous and average, headlamp on warning, gear position indicator and distance to empty. Now let's see what this little space here in front has to offer. Well, to begin with, there are no vanity mirrors here. This is the top end. The steering wheel by itself looks quite classy and sporty. The non-adjustable power steering wheel gets steering mounted audio and voice control. The vehicle has a 7 inches touch screen infotainment system. This is only offered in the VXI Plus variant. It is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatible and has Bluetooth connectivity. With a simple touch of your finger, you can select your music from various sources. You can call anybody through the paired phone for hands-free conversation. There is navigation and one can also turn your smartphone into a remote control for using the screen by downloading Smart Play Studio app. The screen also displays your vehicle alerts where you get details of driving range, fuel average, etc. 
and other parameters of your vehicle performance on the screen. Also, if your door is open at any stage while the car is moving, there is a door alert message that is prompted on the screen. As for storage space, well, you have a pretty decent glove compartment. There's some stuff which you can keep here, but it'll slip off. AC vents, two here by the side and two on top. So rather uniquely positioned, but very comfortable. It comes directly on your face. So that is good. And we have a USB and an aux in slot here. Then a 12V slot here. Minimal dials here. This is the air condition control. This is the temperature control. And this is the direction control. So that's it. And the power windows for the front two seats, because there are no power windows at the back, just the, so the, for the front two seats, the controls are here. And of course, this is a hazard light. There you go. Now, interestingly, this car has DRLs and you can switch off and switch on the DRLs from a switch on your right hand side here. There's on the floor console, you find space for two tiny bottles or two cups and a space for your mobile. Just about fits in there. There you go. That's it there at the center con at the, at the floor console here. And uh, you have these teeny weeny pockets here on the uh, inner door panel, but that's too tiny. And if you go down somewhere here, you can keep a small bottle and some papers or some knickknacks here. So squeezed in space here, but decent enough. The seats per se are comfortable for a person who's around 5'10 and I'm a little bulky. So I have fitted in quite well in this little space and the seats are nice. It's got these side supports. It's got a little bit of under thigh support, not too much of it. Back support is good. It's got an integrated headrest. So a relatively good seats. Not very fancy, but definitely comfortable. Let me now, in the same position, go back to see what's it like at, at the rear seat. And I'm here at the back and realize that there is so much of knee room, leg room, and head room. And of course, this ideal for two people, two bulky people like me, a third, a dainty person can just be seated in the middle, but ideally good for two bulky people. So there you go. And integrated headrests, which are kind of useless because it has no support of any kind. So if you're a little short person, maybe it's helpful. Or if you want to slide and you want to relax, perhaps it's good. But if you are sitting upright, these don't make any sense. Okay, you have grab handles here and no blowers at the back and no charging point of any kind at the back. No power windows at the back, so you have to manually slide it down and manually roll it up. Storage at the rear is, uh, of course, minimal. There's a little space here to keep a cup or a, a bottle. And there's a teeny mini slot here. The max it can help, perhaps. Let me see if my mobile phone can fit in. Well, it can. That's the best it can do and nothing else. Okay guys, now coming to driving, an AMT is fun if you understand it well. There is no park mode in it, but you get neutral, drive mode, reverse and manual. On the road, while the cabin was relatively insulated to sound of passing vehicles, the engine did sound a bit as though it was whining. The 99 8 cc petrol engine produces a peak power of 67 hp at around 5500 rpm and a peak torque of 90 newton meters at around 3500 rpm now all you out there who are driving an amt for the first time you should realize that this car comes with a crawl or a creep function 
when you take the foot off the brake and the car creeps forward and this function is a boon in a chocker block traffic scenario. The problem comes when you have to suddenly go fast or overtake. I had to keep up with my camera person who was speeding ahead in his car. While that car went like a rocket, in order to keep up with him, I had to get into M or manual mode. That was the only way to pick up speed. Now if one were to simply flow the accelerator pedal in drive mode, the results will be disastrous. There is something known as kick down which is essentially a downshift which is activated when one pushes the car's accelerator to the floor. Instead of getting higher speeds, the car jerks and then as though it is taking a deep breath, it moves ahead. That's a wrong style of driving. One should remember that an AMT does not work like a CVT or a more modern automatic gearbox. But since it is a lot more affordable and is easy to maintain, most of the entry level cars get this transmission. I am not complaining except for the whining. I found the little fellow quite a speedster. As for calling it a mini SUV, I tossed it around a bit on the barren track. It took the punishment quite gracefully. Not a mini SUV, but definitely a smart, strong and cool vehicle. Just like an espresso.